Reference table R is set up in a very intelligent manner. It tells you which families are isomers of each other. Alcohols and ethers are isomers of each other. Aldehydes and ketones are ethers of each other. And organic acids and esters are isomers of each other. Look at this. One propanol, methyl ethyl ether. These guys are isomers of each other. They have one, two, three, one, two, three carbons. They have three, six, well, they have three, five, seven, eight hydrogens, three, five, eight hydrogens, one oxygen, one oxygen. Because they have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, they are isomers of each other. Even though this is one propanol and this is methyl ethyl ether, they are isomers of each other. Aldehydes and ketones are also isomers of each other. Why? Because they share the double bonded oxygen. Ketones and organic acids are isomers of each other because they share the carboxyl group. So if they share a functional group, they're isomers of each other. So if we want an isomer of 2-propanol that's an ether, here's how we do it. Prop has three carbons. 2-propanol means that the OH is on the second carbon. So that would be 2-propanol. Our ether would also have to have three carbons, but ethers have that oxygen in between. So there we have three carbons, three carbons, and one oxygen. Now we just need the same number of hydrogens. Now this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So the isomer of 2-propanol that's an ether is methyl ethyl ether. An isomer of 2-pentanone that is an aldehyde? Well, pent would be five carbons. 2-pentanone means the double bonded oxygen is on the second carbon in from the end. And then we fill in the rest with hydrogens. Now we want an aldehyde. An aldehyde is where the double bonded oxygen is on an end carbon. So if we want an isomer of this, we'd still draw our five carbons and we'd put the double bonded oxygen on one of the two ends and then fill in with hydrogens. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens. Pentanal is the isomer of 2 pentanone. All right, now we have butanoic acid. We want an isomer that's an ester. All right, let's draw butanoic acid. Four carbons, and in organic acid, the carboxyl group is on the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. Okay, great. Now we want this to be an ester. We actually have two possible choices here. In an ester, the COO goes in the middle. So maybe it's the first carbon. This is an ester called propyl methanoate. One carbon, oh, four carbons, four carbons, two oxygens, two oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. What's another possibility? Maybe the carboxyl group is the next carbon over. This is ethyl ethanoate. Four carbons, four carbons, two oxygens, two oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. These are also isomers of each other. Remember, an isomer are molecules that have the same number of atoms of each element, the same molecular formula, but different structural formulas. Esters and organic acids are isomers of each other. Here's one that crops up all the time. Draw an isomer of butane. Let's draw butane. But for four carbons. Butane, that's just the single bonds between the carbons. No dangling danglies dangling off the dongle. So what we need to be able to do is rearrange these four carbons and ten hydrogens in such a way that they're not the same molecule anymore. Hmm, how can we do that? Well, can we take these, this carbon and these three hydrogens and put them up here? That looks different, doesn't it? It looks different, but it's not. 
It's still four carbons in the longest continuous unbroken chain. This is still butane. Therefore, remember we said all the bonds on a carbon are equivalent? But if we take this carbon and put it here, now we have three carbons in the longest continuous unbroken chain with a methyl above it. Methyl propane. And that is an isomer of butane. It's sometimes referred to as isobutane. Now the more carbons you have, the more possible combinations you have and the more isomers you can form.